Good morning, good morning. Pastor Susie and I. Sitting here in the church town, Church of God, she is a forlorn little puppy this morning because it is raining so hard. She ran out and peed and ran back inside, but she has not had her morning walk. Right, baby? You were waiting to get out there. And we will wait till the rain subsides a bit. She's a great companion, very wonderful little companion. Hi, Larry. So here we are, my brothers and my sisters, in the Church Town Church of God. It is nice and dry in here. I keep it about 63, 64 degrees when church is not in session. There I am. Good morning, good morning. Come on up, Suze. You got your own chair? We are concluding a very good week here in, at Turning on the Lights. I hope that what we have discussed has been edifying to you. Who am I talking to? She's asking me all the time when I do Turning on the Lights or I'm recording for the radio station. She just doesn't know who I'm talking to. It drives her crazy. Come here. Just come on up. You can do it. It just drives her crazy. So here she is, worried, 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 worried that I'm talking to somebody other than her. There she goes. Um, that would be just a no, 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 no. So Susie and I are here this Friday morning. We've got uh, some things to do this afternoon, a little bit of work to finish up this morning, but hopefully nothing too stressful today. Cleaned the church from top to bottom yesterday, worked hard yesterday getting everything ready for the weekend, the service and the music and the sermon and the church and all kinds of different things that we took care of yesterday. Worked on that Mevo and I think maybe I figured something out. When I watched the video, I don't know how I missed it, but it would certainly appear that I need a converter. So, converter's on the way. Electronic equipment really isn't expensive, but you just, it's, it's, You've got different brands and, you know, nothing is compatible, so to speak. It, all, everything has to be done with this converter, that converter, this converter, that converter, because nothing, it's all, you know, a hodgepodge of different brands. But then the companies, I guess, make their money making converters and adapters and all of those different things. I'm trying to get all of the converters and the adapters that I need to convert what we do here in the microphones into the iPad, into the Mevo streaming. I think maybe I'm on to something after yesterday. So we shall see. Well, anyway, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Liz. Good morning, Larry. It is a gloomy, rainy Friday morning. I turned on, oh, I don't know, seven o'clock or whatever. I turned on the weather. And the weather person said, it's a damp morning out there. And meanwhile, I'm looking out the window and it's coming down in sheets. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty damp, I guess. Looked at the radar. It's all like yellow and orange and red. Yeah, it's pretty damp. Whatever. So good morning, Rick. Good morning, Sharon. We are concluding, not concluding. We never conclude our discussions, do we? But we're, we're, we're talking about a couple of different threads here. Yes. Yes, and I think that, like I said, I'm on to something here with this adapter, and I'm going to give that information to him, see what he thinks. So yeah, I appreciate that very, very much. Very, very much. And I, like, it, it's just, it gets to be frustrating. Good morning, Sharon. It gets to be frustrating because you, depending on what equipment you have depends on what adapters and converters you need and blah, 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 blah. So, anyway working on it and we're going to open with prayer here in a minute if you have a particular prayer need um, let us know let us know so we can support you today and we can support you moving forward I know our sister Connie is home again she is not well. She needs to rest and recover because uh, she pushes herself too hard. And um, so that's that. 
What was I talking about? Oh, the different threads that we're going to carry over. We're talking about the image of God. Talking about the image of God. We're talking about how we are reflections of him. And he is not a construct or a reflection of us. So that's one thing that we've been really talking about. We've been talking about the idea of predeterminism and free will and God's sovereignty and how that all plays together. Woo, that's a mind blower. And we've been talking about this worldview of the supernatural or spiritual realm and the physical realm and how that works together. We, we, we made mention of it in Genesis, um, and we talked about the, the two main schools of thought, that when, uh, when the scriptures read, then God said, let us make man in our image, the two main schools of thought are that he is speaking as a Trinitarian in, within his Trinitarian nature, or that he is speaking to the Elohim, the spiritual realm, the divine counsel, if you will. So we're exploring that spiritual realm as well. So those are some pretty interesting things. And as always, we are very... Hey, Marty. Oh, we're going to pray for your hands, too. I don't want to tell Marty's story. She just needs... She needs healing prayers. So we're praying for Marty as well this morning. Um, but like I said, on turning on the lights, we talk about this as part of the Christian worldview, and it matters. We don't want to talk about things like theologians in an ivory tower, do we? That, I mean, that's, that can be fun. That can be interesting. We read those books. We hear those conversations. We participate in them. But... God's Holy Spirit is transformational in nature. And we believe in a transformational theology. We believe that when we talk about the big lofty concept, for example, of light, we brought that up in Genesis, light, the light of God and how he uses light. I'm not talking just anyway about the sun, that sort of thing. That's wonderful. We can study those threads all throughout scripture, but if we can't, carry the worldview that we should be the light moving forward out of our churches into the world, then what good is it? Uh, you know, theology is not just an intellectual exercise. Good morning, Andy. Good morning, Liz. Good morning, Stacy. You know what I mean? Theology is not just an intellectual exercise. It is a very practical understanding, and I believe that's the way it should be. When I teach it, um, I taught a little bit for the seminary and so on and so forth. Uh, that is good morning. Um, that's how I approach it. I mean, I enjoy the intellectual discussions and go, oh, look at this side of the fence and that point of view and all of that. And like I said yesterday when I read that piece, you know, we can only hope, you know, the, the, the problem with theology, remember the writing yesterday? The problem with theology is that it is done by humans. And we can only hope that God is not irritated, but amused at the different things that we come up with as we look in his word. If it is a good faith attempt, I believe that he allows a great deal of grace in our understanding of him. So we try to stay as faithful to the Holy Scriptures as possible. Right, Will? Right, Roxanne? Good morning, good morning. So why don't we go ahead and pray? Remember Connie in your prayers. Remember Marty in your prayers. <clears throat> Say, Father God, good morning. Good morning, good morning. We oh, so grateful for this morning, Lord. So grateful for you. Lord, we love you and we appreciate you and we come before you today, a humble people, seeking your wisdom and your perspective and your knowledge, Lord. In Jesus' name, would you lead us in our discussion today? As we humble ourselves, as we submit our wills to you, Lord, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for you, in Jesus' name, amen. So what do you wanna, what do you wanna, what do you wanna, 
right? We talked about the, the worldview, the supernatural worldview, the created spiritual beings, the created physical realm, physical beings. We talked about the idea of, pre we, we did that pretty hard yesterday, predeterminism, right? Free will, theism, and God's sovereignty, and, and the, the linchpin in that conversation is God's sovereignty, how we view God's sovereignty. The linchpin, I think, in the conversation about supernatural worldview, right? As Christians, we understand that there are created spiritual beings. Like That part is undeniable. We look in scriptures and we see angels and cherubim and seraphim Right. We we know that God interacts with spiritual beings, i.e. Job. We know that God interacts with this something called a divine council or the great assembly. Because it's there. So oftentimes we read over it. And the question is. Who are they? When we refer to uh, the Deuteronomy 32 worldview. Let me go right in the beginning of Deuteronomy 32. It talks about this. And it says, uh, Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as raindrops on the tender herb, and as showers on the grass. For I proclaim the name of the Lord Ascribe greatness to our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are justice. A God of truth and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. Talking about Yahweh. Talking about God. The God of gods. Right? Good morning, Logan. They have corrupted themselves. They are not his children. Because of their blemish, a perverse and crooked generation, do you thus deal with the Lord, O foolish and unwise people? Is he not your father who brought you? Has he not made you and established you? Talking about the people, God, right? Yahweh and interaction with his people. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your father and he will show you. Your elders, and they will tell you. When the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations. Now it's getting interesting. Who is he talking about here? And what about dividing their inheritance? When the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations. When he separated the sons of Adam. Remember the Tower of Babel? He set the boundaries of the peoples. According to the number of the children of Israel, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the place of his inheritance. Another translation reads, when the Most High assigned lands to the nations, when he divided up the human race, he established the boundaries of the people according to the number in his heavenly court. For the people of Israel belong to the Lord. <clears throat> and, and what we talk about there is the idea that God separated the peoples of the earth, as we know, through the Tower of Babel, right? And he separated the peoples of the earth and he gave dominion over all of the other peoples of the earth to his heavenly court, to other small G gods. To other Elohim. But his portion of that. The people of Israel. And he was going to use this to demonstrate. And eventually it's going to expand back over the entire earth. Interesting stuff. Things to look at. Things to think about. Understanding how God is interacting with this. Heavenly court. And what it means to us today. 
right? When we, when we look at how God interacts with this heavenly court, and then we turn to Psalm 82, and we see that as he divided them up and gave dominion over other groups of people, Jim, you know this worldview. Good morning, Jim. And gave dominion over uh, groups of people groups to other small g gods, to other Elohim, that they went crazy with it because they are created beings and imperfect as we are. So God presides over heaven's court. He pronounces judgment on the heavenly beings. How long will you hand down unjust decisions by favoring the wicked? Right? So you're allowing human beings to be wicked. You give justice to the poor and the orphan, uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute, rescue the poor and helpless, deliver them from the grasp of evil people. But these oppressors know nothing. They are so ignorant. They wander about in darkness while the whole world is shaken to the core. I say to them, you are gods. You are children of Yahweh. But you will die like mortals and fall like every other ruler. Rise up, Yahweh, and judge the earth. For all the nations belong to you. I mean, that's just, whoo, interesting stuff, right? And, and I, I love this. You, mm, it's so rich and so deep and just gives you so much to consider. That little creation account. And how it expands into this worldview. Now, if you want to go through the fall and the refall, and all, you know, the, uh, theologians call it a number of different things, go Genesis 1 through 6, Genesis 1 through 8, and see Babel, right? Talk about the Nephilim. Right? And the sons of. God saw the daughters of man and, and found them attractive. What is all of that about? And then we see the flood account. And then we see the reference to giants still walking the face of the earth afterwards. I mean, it's just amazing stuff. It's all in there. And I believe, again, as we look at the sovereignty of God and the infallibility of his holy scriptures, that leads us to that fundamental question, regardless of what we are reading in the Holy Scriptures. The fundamental question is, Lord, I have complete and utter faith that this is here for serving your purposes. Lord, what are those purposes? Why is this here? Show me, lead me. And our first, our first action as we enter into his Holy Scriptures, his divinely inspired scriptures should be submission in prayer to him and his will and his direction. And there are, you know, he's not like, oh, look, this is what I meant. But man, he'll lead you on a lifelong journey through the scriptures. And for me, it's only been 10, 11 years. And it, it, to say that I've even scratched the surface would be an overstatement. It's just amazing. Amazing and incredible and wonderful and you you could and people do. You know, we know from the from the from the monastic societies to the ivory tower theologians, people spend all day, every day in the scriptures. Um, but you can. So we've had some interesting conversational threads here. Uh, and I really, really appreciate that. Like I said, the predeterminism versus the free will theism. And how God's sovereignty plays in that. How do we view God's sovereignty? Right? I know that we can all find proof texts to support predeterminism and or free will theism. But I think there's a more fundamental issue at heart here. And is how do we view and respond to that view of God's sovereignty? Is it neat and tidy in a box wrapped up with a little bow, as determinism would say? We don't want to think about these more complex things, so here's what I'm clinging to. I'm wrapping it up. I'm going to make it a whole lot easier. Even And everything that I can't describe, I'm just going to 
put in the mystery category? Or do we just look at the, what appears to be contradictory statements in Scripture and open ourselves up to saying, well, does it have to be either or? Can it be both and? Can it be an all of the above answer? Does God have to be created the way that I think he should be created or can I just open myself up to this? Very interesting things that we think about. So I'm rambling today, like I said, wrapping up the week, lots of things to think about. And if you have questions where you would like to go even next week, um, let me know. Let me know because we can go there. Um, Let's go back. Because another thing that we mentioned this week was the uniqueness, the holiness, the otherness of man, of human beings. Say, what? We're made holy. Right. Because we are created as spiritual beings in this physical realm. And as we come through the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and our spirits coincide, meet with God's spirit, this. But what we talked about is one of the fundamental truths also of creation, and that is human beings are different. We are not animals. Do you remember the order of creation through Genesis 1, when he begins by creating universe? And then in the universe, he creates the dimension in which we can exist. Sun, the moon, the stars, he creates time, seasons, orbits, all of those things, perfect um, elements in which we can live. Oh, I think that might be my wife saying goodbye. Is that you, honey? Nope. Uh, anyway, she's leaving for work early today. Right? And then he, be, he creates the land and then the sea creatures, the sky, then the animals, domestic and wild, and then human beings. So if we want to talk about how we can, how, do we, can we countermand the theory of evolution, which is one of the worst theories ever promulgated by science, with such little evidence to back it up. We see adaptation in species, but we cannot put a cause and effect, a chain together of evolution. And as a matter of fact, unbeknownst you know, to the vast majority, because it's sold as settled science, most of the Recreations or cre are, are not recreations of dinosaurs. They are creations. Like we project back and we say, this must have been like this. So when we countermand that, we, we look at our scriptures and we see the order of creation and we understand that humankind is separate and distinct. We're not animals. We didn't evolve from animals. We are completely other than animals with regard to everything but our sort of biologics. Does that make sense? Consciousness, self-awareness, imagination, creativity, reason. When we look here in scriptures again, listen to this. Because this ties together. Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place. Creation. What are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care for them. What are we? We're just animals, right? Wrong. Yet you made them only a little lower than the gods. What? 
Other translations say you made them a little lower than God. <coughs> Other translations say you made them a little lower than the angels. What? Doesn't that speak of a heavenly realm? What does that mean? Putting all things under their, you gave them charge of everything you made. Putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds and the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims in the ocean currents. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. That, that blows me away as it harkens back to the thread of creation, as it harkens back and, and speaks of how the idea that we just talked about, that human beings are spiritual beings in this biologic form. You want to see the perfect? You want to see the perfect creation of that? You look at Jesus Christ. Right now, we are not there. As we move into the kingdom of God, we will be there one day. Just, again, I, I had no agenda today. We're rambling about a variety of different Exactly. And again, I think, well, one, we see the enemy at work in such things. Get away from this ancient, ridiculous story and give us something that's in a, that is in a box. It, this is rationally understandable. And it is. It's rationally understandable because you can, you, you know, and, and especially after you're indoctrinated with it for years and years and years and years and you see all of the charts of gorillas evolving into human beings. And you're just like, oh, okay. But then we, when we explore our spirituality, which we do here, we see a much more complex creation than that, actually. What? That can be more complex. Yes, it's much more complex. Directed by the hand of God. And understanding that it, part of that creation, separate and distinct from the animals, are human beings. For you made us a little lower than the gods. And gave us dominion over the biological world, the physical realm. Spiritual beings in a physical body, and our purpose is, is have, our purpose is to have dominion over creation, physical creation. Pretty cool. Indeed it was. Oh, I'll be interested in this one, too. I think either the thought you speak of the e I think the either or thought that you speak of concerning the sovereignty is the mystery. We can discuss it, debate it all we want, but in the end, the sovereignty of God is a mystery. There's a tension between God's call, man's responsibility. In some ways, I enjoyed the discussion, but in the end, I'm also satisfied that it is in that neat box you speak of, the sovereignty of God's will. I'm a good Calminian. <laughs> I like that. Uh, ultimately, I defer to the sovereignty of God in all aspects. Again, like we spoke about yesterday, I believe that it doesn't have to be either or. I believe that God may do as he wills. I believe that he is a free moral agent, and we, being created in his image and likeness, are free moral agents. He is omnipotent and omniscient. We are not. Thus, he may interject himself in a sovereign way over his creation any time he chooses. So when we talk about, when we talk about what does it look like, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting messages here. Um, so when we, when we talk about God's sovereignty, uh, what does it mean that 
things were predestined. The idea of John the Baptist, was he not predestined? Very well could have been. And I think that that's okay. That does not eliminate all of the rest of human history. That does not eliminate the idea that we are free moral agents. It reinforces the idea that God is sovereign. And so if there are these points in history where he interjects himself, hello, Jesus Christ, he may do so as he chooses, when he chooses, how he chooses. And it does not necessarily prove that or, or take away from my autonomy as a created being who's given enough information by his holy scriptures to make the best decision that I can. And to use the language of being called and being elect in those sorts of things, I think, again, you have two strains going here. First of all, you have God's omniscience understanding that some will and some won't. Is he referring to the called? Is he referring to the elect in that context? Secondly, I believe that throughout history, you do have the elect. You do have the called. I think you do have the Moseses and the Noahs and the Davids and the John the Baptists of history. And you have the Brian Warners. You understand what I'm saying? I do believe that that moment when I had my come to Jesus moment over a decade ago, that I had the choice still. I could have walked away because I felt that, I felt that pull. I knew what the choices were. And I made that choice. And, and I, I guess you can always say it'll be a mystery. Did God, know, you know, do that for you or whatever the case may be. But man, I know, I know when I was confronted with the truth and the reality of salvation through Jesus Christ and his sovereignty in my life as not only Savior but Lord and the gods of this world that I could continue to follow, I felt that choice. I was not, I did not grow up believing I was saved. Could have cared less. So that's, that's my experience being brought into the conversation as well. There's no doubt about that. My experience is brought into the conversation. But I also see that throughout the course. I see so many decisions that human beings made based on the information that they had, good and bad. And I also see individuals being called, hey, Kathy, being called, and shall we use the word predestined to be who they were and serve the purposes of God ordained to them? No, I don't think it has to be either or. I believe it can be both and. And if God would choose to take me right now and move me around to do this, do that, do the other, I, he can if he would choose to stand in front of me right now as a representation, like in the Old Testament, we hear about the angel of the Lord. Or in physical form, he could do that if he so chose. You know, I just, that's my definition of the sovereignty of God, that he is a free moral agent and omnipotent. I'm a free moral agent and anything but. So, there you go. The world according to Brian. And all we can do is hope that in God is amused by my musings and not irritated. Like we read yesterday. I, just, I like that. <clears throat> I like that. The, the, thing, the one thing that is wrong with theology is that it is done by human beings. So. There's the Brian Warner worldview. <clears throat> All my followers, come along. We're going to start a cult over. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just messing around. <clears throat> Pick up your cross and follow me. Right? You must deny self daily. I don't... What's he mean by that? If I don't have a choice. Pick up your cross and follow. 
Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And, and that's where I am as well. When I, well, now, heretical is probably, like I said, I think, let's use the framework of God being amused by our musings. I believe that a good faith submitted interpretation of Scripture you know, if it's, if, it's, if it's done within that framework, that is, you know, that, that is, I don't know, because I'm not God, but I, I just, I feel like God understands. We have the scriptures we've read, we've considered, we've discussed, and we've done the best that we can. So that good faith interpretation, right? And we're not trying to use them to manipulate people, hurt people, or that sort of thing. So I'm 100% on board with you, Dennis. 100% on board with you. I think human beings fall into sin and heresy, of course, when we alter the scriptures, particularly, obviously, to serve our purposes. And in the process, we are disrespecting, if not harming or trying to harm God's creation and or from within the kingdom of God itself. And we're in big trouble then. Big trouble then. Agreed 100%. And that's why I go back and, you know, I, right, Jim? We have fantastic conversations and it's iron sharpening iron. And it, it, it expands our thinking uh, instead of being locked. If you're locked in a box and you simply will not consider anything else, that's a bad place to be. Right? That's not how we are meant to be. Expansive thinking, considering and asking those fundamental questions. Okay, Lord, there is a diversity, a seeming diversity, like di divergent worldviews. No, 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 no. It's a coherent worldview. And it is so beautifully and subtly composed that human beings are spending and will spend until God chooses to bring this epoch of history to close. We will spend our time discussing, discerning, reading, delving in, in good faith to grow and to become and to understand. That's what it's all about. It's what this is all about. It's what this is all about. So Mark says, hello. Hello, hello, Mark, hello. But is that the heavenly court? The heavenly court seems to be these Elohim. So anyway. All right, my brothers and my sisters. Um... It's been a good week. I, I don't know if Friday made any sense. I may not even post this because we've wandered. We've talked about the various threads that we've been talking about throughout the course of the week, sort of like a wrap up. We've touched upon, what did we touch upon? De Deuteronomy 32, Psalm 82, Psalm 8. Um, and we've talked about the uh, Matthew, pick up your, cro uh, pick up your cross and... Follow me daily. Deny self. Sounds like an action to me. Pick up your cross and follow him. I hope that there's a lot there to consider. I hope that you do. Uh, like I said, the yeah. Well, like I said, other than other than you know putting the previous days on because they're posted on YouTube, but you'd have to like not watch it, just put the YouTube and Bluetooth to your car, the sound. I've done that with some videos, um, but I don't have a real audio version of this. Hmm. Hmm. But, um, so yeah, that's where we've been, and uh, I enjoy it so much. I mean, this is, between this and helping to create that radio program, uh, and then my you know, wherever I go in my own studies, it, this is, helps keep me engaged. It's very intentional. You guys are very, very challenging. And that's a good thing. 
That's a good thing. So, Father, thank you as we go into this weekend. You know what we're going to pray, my brothers and sisters. Lord, may your church honor you and not embarrass you. Lord, may your church submit to your authority. May your body do as you will. Lord, lead us in all of that. Around the world, let your church universal show your light. And may each and every individual who is so led by you go and invest in that body because it really is important. In Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Did the Geyer fam visit this past Sunday. I'm here at Churchtown, the Geyer family. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Wait, Dennis has an idea. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. I mean, I download them from you know, obviously from Facebook Live, the creation there to MP4, it converts it. Facebook does that now. What do you guys think? Should I, should I post this one? Because we, it was kind of like, if you weren't around for the rest of the week, let me know. Otherwise, go ahead and, and interact with it and share it. That's why people are getting it, right? Because that's the way the algorithms work. If you find it valuable and you think all well, that, that's the way it works. The more people who interact and share and all those things, then it goes out and, get, and, and the algorithm says, oh, this is popular, and it goes out. So you are, Dennis, right? And I mean, you are like the Pope of Perry County, brother. I mean, you are just, I love you, man. Hey, I love you all. And that's the truth. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>